I don't know if there's anything warm uh, coming from Pittsburgh this morning. I think I left at 7.15 this morning from Pittsburgh. I think it's 10.15 Eastern time right now. I haven't had a nap. I can't sleep on an airplane. Um, but it definitely is a privilege and an honor really to be here speaking to you. Uh, when I got asked to come to Portland, you know, I was driving over here uh, from the airport and it just kind of hit me that, um, you know, I, I chose to come to Portland to speak. You know, someone asked, I said, hell yeah, I'd like to go to Portland, go talk ball with those guys up there, you know. Um, you know, like, like people don't think you guys are in the United States over here or something. I don't, I don't get it. It's like, you know, they play football in Oregon, they played in Pittsburgh, they played in Rhode Island, they played all over the place. But to me, it's an honor to go all over the country and speak to different people and, and meet different coaches uh, and have an opportunity to share what knowledge you have with you. And, uh, you know, when I was driving with this, this uh, I guess, administrator, he called himself. He's not a high school coach. He said, you know, a lot of coaches don't want to go fly across the country because if it doesn't help them in recruiting, they don't want to go. And I was like, man, that's kind of a horseshit way of looking at it, in my opinion, because it really shouldn't matter, okay? It shouldn't matter. I'm not coming here to recruit, obviously, um, although I did have one Oregon player um, play for us at uh, Michigan State when I was there. Um, but, uh, you know, you, you never know. Um, and uh, again, my, my opportunity to come here and speak to you guys really is just talk football. And, and I enjoy talking football. I like what we do. I like how we do it. And, um, and again, any opportunity we have, this is that kind of that clinic time of the year. So I think it would be good to come and do some of it. Again, I don't like to come talk philosophies either. I'm going to hit you on a couple quick things. And then I just want to really get into some football. I want to keep it open. So if you got questions, raise your hand in the middle, interrupt me. You're not going to make me feel bad. I'm not going to go shit. I've got some tape at the end that we can kind of zip through it. I can, you know, I kind of put it in there going from like two tight ends, two backs, all the way to empty, okay, which, you know, is anybody, do we, what, what do we see up here? Is it two backs? Is it spread like it is? Should I guess with what Chip Kelly did up here a few years ago? Um, I guess even before I get started, just to familiarize you with where I've been, because it kind of, you know, just even talking about Chip made me think of it. Chip was at New Hampshire a long time ago when I was at Rhode Island, but, uh, and I talked to a couple young coaches over here earlier that said, hey, you know, want to get into it, you know, and it's, and the coaching profession is a great profession. And years ago when I got into it, I didn't get into it to make money, okay? Uh, my dad was a college coach for 30 years, died at age 51. You know, I was one of six children, and I just, you know, when he came home and sat at the dinner table at 10 o'clock at night, I was there saying, who got hurt today? What's this offense look like next week we're facing? Just there. I was one of those guys that was into football all the time, so got into coaching, uh, but mainly because of, you know, the impact uh, that my dad had on my life and um, didn't have him for very long. Um, but, uh, but I played for him for one year at Youngstown State, went and played at the University of Rhode Island, left there, went to be a GA at Miami of Ohio back in 1989. Um, I didn't want to get a master's degree. They made me take 10 credits a semester for three semesters. I had my damn master's, didn't want it, just wanted to coach football. But kind of like a lot of players do nowadays, they go to college so they can play football but you have to get your degree at the same time. Um, left there, to, it actually got hired after two years as a GA, coaching receivers with Randy Walker and, and Kevin Wilson. You guys probably know Kevin Wilson was out at Oklahoma for a long time, Indiana. Now uh, I think the offense coordinator at Ohio State. He was a uh, coordinator, uh, O-line coach at Miami. Left there to make a lot more money. I think I was making 17,000 as a as wide receiver coach at Miami of Ohio uh, back in 91. And then 92 spent next seven years, I believe, Starting to get all clouded up in there, but seven years at uh, the University of Rhode Island, which was my alma mater. Brought my wife back there. Had three babies in, in Rhode Island, uh, you know, where she was around her mother and father, which was you know great opportunity and really to start at ground level. You know, you could start in the MAC where I was. Uh, I could go up there and again made twice as much money at Rhode Island and again, you know, got the water of the fields. And I think that was a, probably a, a turning point in my career. Really, you know, I, I look at that. You know, whether it's a high school coach or a small college coach. It was one double A at the time of just having to do everything, having to fundraise to get the locker, to get new lockers, and then I had to go in there and screw the damn lockers together. These powder blue, ugly ass lockers that we, you know, raised money to put together. And then I had to go out there. I was kind of the, the, the handyman, I had to screw the lockers together, water the field. You know, these big, you know, shooting sod guns. We'd have to, you know, pull those things, hook the hoses up, get soaked doing it because the thing was pointing the wrong way or you couldn't get out in time. Uh, but just did all the small things that, you know, had to to build a program. And then left there to go with Joe Novak, Northern Illinois, for three years as a linebacker coach. Uh, left there to go to Miami of Ohio in 2003, Ben Roethlisberger's last year there. Took over a shitty defense um, that was in the 120s in every category. We're in the top 10 
I got hired seven days before spring ball started, spent one year there, Big Ben threw it all over the place. We stopped people and we went, you know, we, we just we went crazy and, and killed it. And then I got with Mark D'Antonio at Cincinnati after eight months there. My wife bought a house, sold a house. Uh, so that's never easy. I mean, you, you know, you're lucky you're married 27 years when you start doing that shit. It'll, it'll cost you, okay? It'll, it'll, it'll cost you. But, uh, um, but, you know, left there, went to Cincinnati for three years with D'Antonio, then went to Michigan State with him for eight, so spent 11 years with him, and then had the opportunity. And, and, and I think coaches along the way, it's all about being a head coach. And I think, you know, maybe one of the lessons I can share that I think, you know, for all young coaches, I don't care if it's moving to that next high school, it ain't all about the money. I've turned down, you know, Kevin Summon, who I guess was here last night, when he first got the job at Texas A&M to be his D coordinator, turned him down for 850, making 350 at Michigan State. It's kind of like, you know, I'm not from Texas. My wife, when we got on the airplane to leave Texas, I said, what do you think, honey? She goes, well, everybody down here is from Texas, or we're not. That was her quote. I'll never forget. I'm like, okay, honey. It's a lot of damn money. She didn't care. Um, so I got a little bump in, in pay up at Michigan State and stayed there. But, but, you know, I had opportunities to be a head coach somewhere else. But to me, the best thing I ever did was not go to Texas A&M, not because I love Kevin Summer. And I loved his wife, Shar. I mean, just the whole situation seemed like a great fit. It was something new. I wanted something new. But the best thing I did was stay loyal to the guy I was working for and wait for the really, the really right opportunity. I always say this. If I went to Texas, I probably wouldn't have been the head coach of Pitt. So I just didn't move around too much. I stayed together, did my job, and built something. I had an offense coordinator. I won't even mention his name at Pitt. He spent eight months with me, left, okay, to go take one of those big jobs for $1.2 million. And I said, I don't think you want to go, okay? He's like, well, it's a lot of money. I'm like, and I got him a lot of money. I got him a million at our place. So it was like, maybe he went for 1.5, I got him a million, which is just crazy. Like, are you shitting me? You know, like, really? I don't even think he was worth a million. But, I mean, it wasn't even that good. But, uh, yeah, he was a good friend. I was like, listen, you, you're stupid to go. I said, you go there, you're starting your whole career over again. I said, you stay here for another year, have a good year, you'll be a head coach. I'll, I'll send you out of here a head coach. No patience, okay? So have patience in the profession. He goes there, gets fired before the end of the season. There's turmoil all in the newspapers. Even before, I mean, it was a miserable season for the guy. He's gone. Goes and gets another job, okay, after that. And he's gone from there. And he's been in three jobs in three years. And, you know, good luck finding And he's out of a job right now. But he could have been in one place. So be patient in the profession. I don't care, high school, college, peewee. I mean, enjoy doing what you're doing. And again, I love being at Michigan State. I love my job, and I didn't have to leave. I turned down four head coaching jobs, you know, Texas A&M, to stay there for the right job. And I found the right job at this place, the University of Pittsburgh. I love it there. It's about an hour from where I grew up. It's a little bit closer to where my wife is from in Rhode Island. And it's just a, it's the perfect spot. It's a tough-ass city. I'm a tough-ass defensive guy. And it just it got great food. You got great food around here? Is it good food? <laughs> East Lansing, man, if you ever go to East Lansing, it's shitty food. You want... You want Italian food, you got to go to Bravo's, I swear. It's unbelievable. So I love Pittsburgh. Um, we'll get started here. I just had to tell some stories, I guess. Spring ball, if you're interested. We start next Wednesday. Uh, you know, I've had guys come from Florida, California, Texas. Matter of fact, I've had guys come from Mexico to spring ball. When we, matter of fact, at Michigan State, and then they came and said, Coach, we're coming to see you pit. Okay, so Wednesday and Friday of next week we start, and then we're really Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, the rest of spring. We take that one week off, our kids are going to go on spring break, probably screw it up, probably dive in a pool and get hurt. I've had guys do cartwheels and dislocate elbows. Not real excited about the spring break week, uh, but I'll warn them before they go. Um, we have some camps. Again, not really worried about it. I don't think anybody coming from Oregon, but June 1st, you guys can check it out on the computer. Ain't worried about that. I think we got an outstanding staff. Got a couple new members. Mark Whipple's offense coordinator, Randy Bates. Uh, is our uh, defense coordinator. Randy came from Northwestern. He was at uh, Northwestern for 12 years. Knew him through on big 10 days. And Mark Whipple was the head coach at UMass two different years, or two different stints. Uh, won a national championship there. Um, and he also was the head coach at Brown. Did a heck of a job. Had a guy, Isabel, in the, in the uh, I guess, in the, in the combine. Just a, a great coach. And again, just a bunch of great coaches. You may know some of them up there. Just thought I'd pop that up there. Um, Again, just talking about you know, goals, and I'm going to hit this real quick. I'm not going to talk a long time, but we have four program goals we talk about. First one is having lifelong relationships with the coaches and players. And again, I'll talk about relationships, okay? It's something that you have to work on. It's no different than the relationship with your wife or your kids. You have to work on it. And i got to do a better job, okay, with my family. Sometimes I feel like I do a better job with my football team than my family. 
and that's you know kind of horseshit. That's why I'm taking the red eye out of here tonight, so I can at least spend a half a day on Sunday with my family because I'm here with you. Okay, um, but throughout this morning, I'll fly back tonight just to get with my family. Um, but it's all about relationships, guys. Everything we do, you guys are impacting these young men every day. Um, you know, in your buildings, in your high schools, wherever you know, wherever college you're at, and it's about relationships. And I, I'll say this. You know, we can talk all the damn X and O's we want, okay? All the X and O's we want, but until you have a relationship with your players, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, okay? Because the reason we had success at Michigan State and the reason I got a head job is because what the success we had at Michigan State was because the players played their ass off for me. Why did they play their ass off for me? We didn't have a bunch of NFL players, okay? Didn't have them. We just had a bunch of guys. Matter of fact, we didn't beat Ohio State. We beat, we're sitting right in the middle of Michigan, Ohio State, and Notre Dame. We hardly ever beat those guys recruiting. We just took the scraps and beat their ass, okay? But we did it with toughness, but we did it because our kids played their tails off for us, because we had a relationship, because we cared about them, because we asked how their mom's doing. I had, a, I had a, one of our players, I, I told you, I got a new staff, uh, a couple of staff members, and, and I said, hey, how's it going? He goes, coach, it's great. And I said, well, how was it before? Okay, shittiest thing I ever heard in my life. He says, coach, he says, you know, this past coach, he said he just never talked, you know, never, it was all about just football. It was all, this is kids today, okay, 2018, 2019 saying, coach, all he talked about was football. That's not what kids, hey, how's your mom? How's your sister? How's your life going? How's home? Whatever. Talk about those things. It's all about relationships. I think that's the key. And I talk to my former players wherever they are. Okay, I mean, you know, it's amazing how I can just pick the phone up and they, and they call. I was at a restaurant in uh, Cincinnati called Island Fridays, right on the Cincinnati campus. I knew Leo Morgan, one of my former players from Lackawanna College, played there, or, you know, played in Cincinnati, he's there. So I'm in the area recruiting, I go back and have a meal. Not 10 minutes later, there's five other players come running into the place because they heard I was there. You know, Leo must have texted someone, you know, they snapped him or did something. All of a sudden, here they come off the road. But that's what it's all about. Okay, and if your players aren't coming back to you, you know, we, we're doing something wrong in this profession. I think that's why we all coach, like I said, it's not for the money. Um, second one is to graduate our players. Again, relationships every day, working on graduating every single day. It better be about that, okay? And that's part of the caring, okay? And I'll throw another one. I had, I had a player, just talking about relationships, I had a player, he got pissed off me. I can show you text messages to him. You know, he had a player, okay, and this has nothing to do with getting a degree, okay? It has nothing to do with, with um, you know, the relationship part of it. I had to bring his ass to my office. I texted him. I said, hey, are you hanging out with this guy? You know, I, just, I won't give the guy's name because he got in trouble two years earlier with this guy. He was not a good guy. He's not in college. Matter of fact, he made me put new dorm rules. You can't bring someone into your dorm room, okay, that doesn't go to college somewhere else. Okay, he can't be a loser, okay? If he's somewhere else, at least he's got something to lose. But the guy came in the dorm room. He let him lose. Something happened down the hallway. He's responsible for him. So, I texted him saying, listen, you're not hanging out with that guy anymore because I heard the guy was around campus. And I said, he's not a good guy. He got mad because I said he's not a good guy. And then I texted him saying, he says, coach, you don't even know him. So I texted him back and said, hey, you're right. I don't know him, but from what happened before, he don't seem like he's a good guy, okay? Let's put it that way. So no response. I call him, no response. I text him a few more times, no response. So I said, okay, piss on that. I'll call his mom and dad. See, I think, you know, they know what happened with this dude last time. Call mom and dad. Next day, a kid comes to my office and is like, hey, coach, thanks for caring. Okay, thanks for caring about me. Because I said, I could give a shit. You want to get in trouble, get thrown off? I'm trying to protect you. You got a chance to play in the NFL. So those are right. That's, you know, tough love. He gets pissed off for a day and a half and then return the head coach's text message or phone calls. But going back to the degree, work, I mean, that's what we do as coaches. We're putting out fires all day. I feel like a damn fireman. But we, we're working on these things every day, trying to get, get these kids their degrees, getting them to class, getting them to study hall, get your study hall hours in, whatever it may be, every day. We had 33 players in the last three years graduate before they played their last season of eligibility. So we're going to get that done. This next one's the funnest one, win, success, okay? We're in this thing to win, okay? And I told you, you do it with relationships, you do it with caring about the kids and getting a degree and all that. We'd like to win. I say this isn't the funnest because for four years we've been talking about winning the championship, and we ain't there yet, okay? We're not near where we need to be, but, you know, for this year, you know, we played, you know, we end up, I think we're 7-7, seven and seven, guys. We're a shitty-ass team, 7-7. Seven and seven. Played 12 bowl-eligible teams of our 14. Played three of the four undefeated, undefeated teams, you know, okay, such Florida, Clemson, and Notre Dame. Played three of them. Who, who plays three of the four undefeated teams in the country at the end of the year? 
play two of the four playoff teams, and obviously play the national championship in the AC, or the national championship, the national champion in the, the ACC championship in Clemson. Had a hell of a schedule, but you know, we won a Coastal Division ACC championship this year, something I'm proud of. Our kids fought. We lost our first ACC game, our guys fought, stayed with us, played their asses off because of the relationships that I talked about. And again, that's what we came here for. That's why I took this job and not another job, because I knew we could get to the championship game. We're just going to continue to build. I mean, Pitt's won nine national championships. Nobody really knows that. I was at Michigan State for eight years. They've won two. We've won nine, okay? So things co come back in cycles, and, and, and Pitt's on the rise, okay? The last one is be givers, not takers, okay? And too often, too often, you know, our kids got everything. I mean, you know, we got Nike. I went over to the Nike headquarters today. It's like, geez, oh, Pete, I didn't know the damn thing. You know, I don't know how many acres they have. Are there 20 buildings or something? I thought there was going to be one big building, an office building. I mean, that place is unbelievable. Uh, but our kids have everything. They have all the shoes they need. They got everything, scholarship, cost of attendance. They're blessed to have everything they have, okay? But I want to teach, and we want to teach our young how to give back. And I know you guys do that in high school, um, but just, you know, yeah, teaching them how to be givers, not takers. I think that's the, the most important thing. A little bit of the ball right now. Now, just talking defensive philosophy again, just kind of talking where we came. You know, first thing is fundamentals. And I think any time I ever go to a clinic, I say, I'm going to pick up one thing. You know, you're not going to pick up. I hope you don't put the damn defense in. Where's the guy from West Salem at? Where's West Salem coach at? He's right here. Coach put it in, right? How many years ago? He put the defense in four years ago. I don't think you should come to the clinic and put the damn defense in today. I don't think he put it in. You didn't put it in over a clinic, did you? Okay, but you didn't come visit me either. So, what's your, what's your record, by the way? Did you win a championship? Uh, not yet. Okay. Um, but, you know, it's all about fundamentals of coaching little things, guys. It's not about schemes. I'm sitting, this is unbelievable. This is really the first offseason I've sat in the staff room with our defense coaches watching tape, because I don't call the defense anymore. Okay, I don't, I don't, I don't have time. Um, but this is the first, this is the first offseason I've had time just to sit and go through the cutups. And you go, what are we doing here? Look at that fundamental. And I think they're, they're all hating me right now. You talk about relationships with the coaches, they're like, get this guy out of here, okay? Because I'm like, ooh, ooh, ooh. I'm after their ass because it's like, what are we doing? We can be much better than we are, okay? But it's the details and the little things that, that we focus on. It's not, it's not all, the, you know, all these different schemes. I think schemes lose. That's me. I'm a simple guy, okay? And that's kind of what we do. So coaching that. I think disguise is important. Everything we talk about when we do put something else new, it's like, hey, why don't we do this? Uh, you know, well, it, that, you know it, that doesn't look the same. The reason we're not going to do that is because it doesn't look the same. So I want everything to look the same. You know, I'm with Urban Meyer last week, and you know, we had some battles when he was at Ohio State, and, uh, and I was at Michigan State, and he's like, you know, to this day, he said, you know, the year they won a the national championship, he went and put this defense in because it kicked his ass. You know, and every time I see him, he talks about the same thing, you know, I think he is a little sick if you keep talking about the same ass thing, you know. You know, maybe he isn't feeling good. He's a, he's a, good, he's a good football coach, a great, great coach. Uh, but we want to make everything look the same. Um, stop the run. And again, probably one of the things I'm not happy with our defense last year is, you know, the first two years we stopped the run pretty good. Last year we did not. And again, these offenses change, the schemes change. Uh, I'm kind of shocked. You guys probably know it and probably came from you guys. But we see, number, what's the number one run play you think we see at our level? in the ACC? What'd you say? Inside zone, that's number one. What do you think number two is? Outside zone, I heard power, what else? Counter, counter is number two. It's like, what the shit, counter? Like, where the shit that come from? That's like, I mean, talk about things going in cycles. So counters, like, you know, we gotta defend the counter better, okay? But we better be able to stop the run, make teams one dimensional. So that's kind of where I come from. We're gonna stop the run. Okay, and it pisses me off when I talk about it every week as a head coach and it doesn't happen. I want to dominate. I want to kill people. I, I want to make sure they have no run. Okay, we held Michigan one year to minus 48 yards rushing. That's the standard. Okay, minus 48 yards. That's, you know, that'll never change. Okay, so stopping the run is key. Making a team one dimensional. Um, recruit speed. Okay, so we're looking for speed. Okay, I want speed in the 4-3 defense. I want speed in any defense I'm in. You know, with all the spread you guys are all running nowadays, um, you, you better have speed on the field. We've never had to go, we don't play nickel, okay? You know, we don't play nickel. We, we're going to get three linebackers on the field that can play like nickel. We hope all three of them are nickel type backs. We're going to play with speed. We're going to be a little bit smaller, which I think is the reason we've been able to survive because we're not going to get that six foot five, 280 pound DN that runs like that 225 guy that we want. So we'll just play with the little guy 
and try to beat you with speed. So that's kind of what we do speed-wise. And, you know, just how we move these guys around. Again, that's basically our defense right there. I mean, that's how we line up, you know, besides a third down and medium and third long. We're going to line up with a nine technique, three technique, you know, uh, you know, a nose, a shade, or a two-eye, a five technique. Those are our three linebackers lined up at five yards. We'll press most of our corners. I'm going to talk about the press more than anything today. And two safeties lined up, you know, nine, ten yards off the number two receiver to either side. So that's what we look like. But I want as much speed out of those positions as we can. Okay, we'll recruit big ass corners. Okay, if the big corners can't run good enough to cover those receivers, we move them to safety. Okay, and I think again the reason I put this up because you guys have the same the same thing you can do. It's like how do I? Oh, we don't have any of these. You just move your guys around to get more speed on the field. Okay, move your guys around. Every year we move more guys. I mean I got more stories through the years of just moving guys around to get those those big safeties. Like right now, I think it's a bad year across the country to find athletic outside linebackers. So we're just going to recruit a bunch of big ass safeties, okay, you know, that maybe don't run good enough or you think they do, and then after the first day they can't. One of the best safeties we ever did make it, made a huge play on fourth and one against Urban Meyer in the Big Ten Championship game. Danico Sal, never forget him, selling cars down at Cincinnati now. But he made a big ass play on a blitz and stopped, uh, what the heck was that quarterback? It wasn't Troy Smith, but stopped him off the edge and, and won the game for us, okay? Little safety. Five foot, he might, maybe he was 5'9". Okay, nobody else wanted him. We took him, and he, you know, he made a big play. He's from the state of Ohio. He'll never forget that play. So those big safeties go to linebacker. Um, the big, uh, big outside linebackers, they get too big, can't run good enough, can't run with a wheel route. We move to Mike. Those, whoops, those big mics. Uh-oh, where's my video guy? That doesn't look good. I just exited out of the whole damn thing. Big, big-ass thumbs here. Let me see if I can get back here. Yeah, that's pretty quick. Those big ass, uh, no, <laughs> too fast. Big ass mics will go to defensive end. Sorry to slow you down there. Okay, big mics will go to the end. We're going to play. We, we just offered a, like a six foot one, 235 pound kid from St. Ed's in Cleveland, Ohio. I mean, he's about that tall, but he's explosive. He actually played. Mike linebacker halfway through the season they moved him to defensive end because they had another Mike that was pretty good. They actually run our defense coach, St. Ed's High School in Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, so, you know, they moved him up there. I was like, damn, this kid's, you know, explosive. He's exactly what we're looking for. It's one of their mics that they moved down in high school. So it's amazing. We'll move those big defensive ends inside. Okay? Those big defensive tackles, when they get too fat, where do they go? Over there. Okay? <laughs> okay? Now I hate, okay? Talking recruiting, I mean, all the line coach hates when we give him those sloppy guys. Like, hey, we got one for you today. Here, he's moving over. <laughs> you know, and again, they, they end up being, see, I had Dan France was a D tackle from North Wilton High School in Cleveland, Ohio. We brought to Michigan State. He was the only player after six or seven years at Michigan State that ever got drafted on the O-line was a D lineman. So, but what's better than having those defensive tackles? Okay, we had one last year. Mike Hernan was a D tackle, moving to guard. He'll end up getting at least a free agent in the NFL this year, he was probably our best, most physical offensive lineman, explosive kid from Virginia. But we moved those guys over there. And one of the reasons I don't like to recruit those guards, okay, you recruit a guard, oh, he's a great guard. Oh, that's great. Okay, he's a great guard. Where does he go if he can't play guard? <laughs> he goes to the bay. He can't play anywhere. Where's he going to go? The guards might go to center, but they got nowhere to go. They got nowhere. So we're not looking. If you guys got to, don't come up after and say, Coach, I got a good guard for you. Okay, we don't need a guard from Oregon on our football team because, okay, <laughs> so that's where he ends up going, okay? Um, again, another philosophy is just keeping it simple. I talked about, you know, the coaching the little things and, you know, just the scheme is, you know, is, is big, okay? Just keeping it simple enough to, to defend everything, but so there's no thinking that the kids can play fast. The kids want to play fast, guys. Kids want to play fast. One of my DB coaches that I had for really 11 years at Michigan State is a D coordinator at Florida State. Um, and he'll do a nice job down there. He struggled a little bit this year, but, you know, he's got a bunch of guys down there. He's like, I just got to get them to play fast. You know, they, you give these kids too much. They, I mean, they can't, they can't do that much, guys. And I think what coaches sometimes forget is we sit in meetings all day, okay? And I know you guys don't, you know, if you're in high school, don't sit as long as we do. And we don't get to sit as much as we want because we're busy recruiting nowadays, um, sitting on Twitter and, and all that stuff. But, but we sit in meetings all day, and then we think, you know, you're going to have a 45-minute uh, meeting with your players and get them to get all that stuff. 
And that's why I was coming and say, hey, guys, you got a 45 minute. You guys been here all damn morning, and then you want to put it in 45 minutes and then wonder why the kids don't get it right. So keep it simple so they can play fast and they don't have any thinking. Um, just talking zone blitz, okay? And again, we're a big zone blitz team. And if I had to say there's two things that we've done that probably why I'm a head coach today, it's because we press our quarters and play quarters coverage because it's good versus everything. It's what they call the mother of all coverages, and we've mastered it. People used to play press coverage quarters, you know, or excuse me, used to play quarters, but off of off coverage. It used to be, it started as a red zone defense back in the days at Miami of Florida. Um, we got it back in the, in, the, um, in the 90s. But when you talk zone blitz, we also, you know, have been, you know, I guess maybe you call it famous. We zone blitzed a lot, okay? And we played a coverage call, it was three deep 200s. Anybody ever heard of three deep 200? Anybody out here, you guys have that? Okay. So probably the first place it ever came was it, you know, well, it started in Rhode Island back a long time ago. Okay, but that's probably one of the things. So we've zone blitzed and brought six guys. Most times when you bring six, you know, you're playing some type of, you know, zero coverage behind it. Um, but we did it with zone coverage. And that's kind of probably how, you know, we, I mean, that's why we got minus 48 yards rushing with that. It wasn't just for pass or just for run. It was for everything. But, again, I'm a big zone, zone blitz as opposed to man pressure. Okay, and I think, you know, just one way to look at it is, it's all about eyeballs, okay? I mean, we know quarterbacks can carry the ball nowadays, right? And I always, I always talk about zone, the difference between zone and man. And when you're playing man coverage, you know, if, if I got you man to man, I got my eyes right there, okay? And there's 22 eyes on defense, right? So if I got him man to man, all of a sudden now there's just 20. And if you go down the line and you say there's five eligibles, okay? Five eligibles, okay, you're losing a lot of eyes looking at guys. How many balls are there? There's one ball. Who said that? You got to, I think we're going to get you, Dave's going to get you a door prize. Okay, so there's one ball, okay, and I want 22 eyes on the ball. That's why I like zone pressure. I want guys seeing where the ball's going. If you got, you know, your eyes on the man, again, with the quarterback running the ball, it just doesn't make any sense. So that's one of the deals. And I, I just thought I'd put up, you know, a couple years worth again at Michigan State, just what we were. And we're about the same, even when I'm not calling it, but in 2009, I mean, 939 snaps, we were 73%, 26% pressure. Again, 246 zone pressures, okay, with eyes. Only eight times we man coverage, okay? Same thing, seven man, 269 there, 317, eight man coverage. Just going to zip through it here. 2012, you know, 66 base, 33 pressure, or 34% pressure. Again, only 10 man pressures. Four in 2013, that's the year we came out and beat Stanford in the Rose Bowl, okay? 305 zone pressures. Again, 66, somewhere, you know, we're playing base defense. I'm talking four people. Four down, that's it. Line up in that same front you saw all the time. Okay, that's what we did through those years. Um, some reasons I like the 4 3 as opposed to a 3 4, and I know there's a lot of 3 4 guys out there. Uh, you know, the number one thing is I like four down linemen to stop the run. Okay, and that's if you have four. And I guess we can recruit them. Sometimes you guys can't recruit them. But I love the alignment rules. It makes, our, it, makes it easy for our kids to line up. We're going to have a walkthrough on Monday morning when I get back. And, and we'll walk through fast tempo, our offense versus our defense. Our offense is going to be fast tempo, and we'll, we'll get in 10 minutes, 55 to 60 fast tempo walk through. The offense is going to come up, line up, and we'll get lined up that quick. Bang, 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 bang. 55 you know, plays in 10 minutes, just get lined up. We're going to snap the ball, next play. Throw it, and then the second offense will come out. We'll just you know, get through 55 plays like that. So it's easy to get lined up to. Again, when I say easy to get lined up to, when you watch us on tape or watch a TV game or go, go YouTube, let me watch a pit football game and see what the hell they look like, okay? You're going to say, man, they look the same every time. You know, let's say well, they, look, they line up and look the same, except for third down, we'll get into a 3-4 package, okay? I like it because it gets nine guys in a box, okay? You watch NFL football and they talk about, you know, oh, you got an eight-man box, Okay? And, you know, I've always said this, I mean, to stop the run, and we've always been one of the top run defense in the country, you know, to, to, to get nine is better than eight. I want to get as many guys in the box as possible, okay? And, you know, we'll play a little bit of man free. We'll play a little bit of cover three. You know, when we blitz, we're bringing six, but we're playing cover three behind it. So that's the times we're going to get into cover three. But we want to get to stop the run. We want to get nine guys in the box if, if, if possible, and I'll kind of explain how we do that. But anytime you play a guy in the middle of the field, guys, anytime you play man free or cover three and you have a guy in the middle of the field, and that's for years and years and years I've hated it because that guy never does anything back there, okay? He never does anything. It's like the guy that does nothing. And if a quarterback, if you got this 260-pound quarterback that can't run, then you can play with that guy in the middle of the field. 
But if that guy could run, like Denard Robinson, we had to face Denard at Michigan State for a long time. You play with a guy in the middle field, that guy's going to kill you. You have no, you know, they have 11 and you have 10 if they're a quarterback and run. Okay, if they have a quarterback that can run, you better not be playing with a guy in the middle field or you, you wonder why you can't stop the run. It's hard. You can have better players and still not win that battle. Okay, um, we want to bounce all inside runs. Okay, people that want to run the ball inside, we want to bounce it. It was funny. I had a high school coach in my office the other day, Eric Kasparovich, very, very successful uh, coach at Pine Richland. And he says, yeah, get mad, you know, at our safeties, you know, don't make that play in the A gap. And I'm like, holy shit, coach. You want to make the play in the C and the D and the A. And then you'll get mad when the ball bounces outside. You're giving them too much. And he runs our defense as well. But it's like he can't make the play. And he goes, ah, oh, you, you got a good point there. It's like if you want to make the play in the A, you can't make it. I say, just put a big S, S on his thing, call him Superman. I mean, that's the only, way, the only guy that can probably make it in all those, okay? So we want to bounce inside runs. We want to make all outside runs cut back inside. We want to make the tailback have to cut. They want to go inside, make them go out. They want to go outside, make them go in. Simple concept, just we talk about spilling and long arming. Those are the things that we want to do is make sure those runs are going opposite of where they want to, they want to go, okay? Um, defensive line, we, you know, we're going to attack front. We're going to key the ball. We're getting off the ball, okay? And, again, we're looking for guys on, in high school tape that are getting off the ball and being reckless. I don't want to, these guys that are in any froggy stances, you know, reading. So we're looking for guys that are reckless. And, again, it's easy to find D-line that you say, hey, we want you to, when the ball moves, you go, and then just react. That's what they want to do anyway. They don't want to have all these, these rules and put your hands here and do all this shit. They just want to go play football. And that's what we're looking for up front. Linebackers, they're going to key, read, run first, and play ball, okay? Some people will say our linebackers might be out of control, okay? Uh, it's funny, we've had, you know, we've hired four new GAs, and we had them break down all our, uh, you know, we had them do kind of a report. And the one thing I hear, you know, we do this for a reason. I have GAs break down our defense, okay, if they're, if they're offensive GAs, so I can see what they say about our defense, first of all. So I get, the, you know, you pick up good tips like, oh, I didn't know, you know, they might show you blitzing, you know, they might know when you're blitzing or doing something. But the one thing he says is he said the linebackers are very aggressive and they're downhill players. And that's, when I hear that, I'm like, okay, at least it still looks like that, okay? Even though sometimes, you know, I'm going to get after our linebacker coach and make it better, okay? But we're playing the run safeties. Again, playing run to pass, okay? Obviously, they got a little bit more pass responsibilities. Anytime their number two is in the box, they're run fitters. They're running downhill. Anytime their number two is detached, then obviously they're keying that guy and verifying everything off of the number two receiver. We'll talk about that. Corners are going to uh, press most of the time. The technique varies um, depending on who our corners coach is and, and what I can talk those guys into doing um, and play with great technique, okay? Why we like cover four. Now, does anybody know what cover four is? You guys all know what cover four is? Anybody, anybody go, coach, give me a, what is cover four? Because half our players don't know sometimes. I ask our DBs, like, hey, what's cover four? What's it mean? See, I asked a player last week. I said, how many eligibles are there? He couldn't answer it. They don't freaking know. He's like, I'm a corner. I got that guy. You know, they don't care. I'm like, what do you mean you don't care? Okay. So the reason we like, you know, quarters coverage is it's quarters, you know, quarters. You know, there's four eligible threats. Okay. As I tell sometimes our secondary, each, the corner, you got that quarter. Safety to that side's got that quarter of the field. He's got, you know, the other safety's got that quarter. That corner's got that corner. Okay. If they send five guys vertical, okay, we're in deep shit, correct? Right? So if you line up an empty and send that fifth guy vertical, there's a, there's a freaking issue because we're not playing fifths, we're playing quarters, just so everybody's on the same page. Okay? So quarters is really good versus that team that's running four verticals. Like, I know Coach Shaw's going to come here tomorrow. They like, I mean, they're, they're the best four, four vertical team I've ever faced. And again, we played them in the Sun Bowl this year. They beat us 13 to 14, so don't, don't be talking about that tomorrow. Okay? Um, but uh, again, so that's quarters. Any questions so far? Questions about quarters? Yes, sir. So, uh, the safety is in the box. You said that that, that's what I said, that the run fits first, like the run responsibility. You said key detach. Uh, does that include the tight end? Yep. Or, or are you talking strictly running back? No, it's a t it includes the tight end, because if that tight end's right there, he's coming down. He's got to run down. It's, it's a tight end, right. right? It's not Jerry Rice, so he can run down, take that tight end. Tight end box, boom, he's fitting. Right. If the tight end was split out, same dude, but now all of a sudden he splits out. Well, now he's not in the run fit, doesn't need to be in the run fit. And, and so, but he's still playing uh, uh, run first, so that the safety tight end is going to pass out? He's got him then. Okay, he's got yeah, well, yeah, if the tight end don't block anybody, it's a pass. Okay. Good, good question, though. That's a good question.
that's exactly what he's doing. He's looking at that guy, and if he blocks the DN, then he comes running down, and again, if he blocks him and then goes out, he, he's on him anyway. So he'll still keep good eye control. Good question. Okay, so again, why we like to talk, talk about the nine guys in a box, it allows our linebackers to run. And anybody who plays some thirds or man free, you know, sometimes, well, hey, you can run on this play, but you can't run on this play. You got to know where that safety, our safeties are both coming down. If our backers are out of the box, they're basically the cutback players. But it allows our linebackers to run, and it, it gives our safeties are the cutback players. Anytime our backers are walked out, you know, in an apex position, which I got videotape here, then they're the cutback player. And we don't need the safety, as coach just asked, okay? It's great for all the shot, shot, shotgun and, and uh, quarterback runs, as we talked about. We don't have that guy in the middle of the field. It's great for screen coverage. There's nothing worse than a team running a screen and you drop off and play cover two, for example, or cover three, and those linemen get up on you and give that tailback all kinds of space. So we, we know that's been great for us through the years. Takes away all uh, the underneath throws. We're on, we're snugged up on everybody. That quarterback better be on fire. And some of the, you know, you know, some of the best quarterbacks have picked this up because they can throw it and, and get it done and make the play and put it in, in tight spots. Like Mitch Trubisky, he's a player. Uh, one of the best quarterbacks that we've faced in the ACC, uh, my tender there so far, okay? Um, releases and route predictions. I mean, we know, okay, in our quarters, in our press quarters, okay, we know what routes the guys are going to run, okay? And I'll, I'll explain that to you in a second here. Um, again, top, re top ten reasons for press coverage, guys. Number one is it, it's attack philosophy. We're an attack team. We like to blitz. You know, our D-line's attacking up front, our linebackers are running downhill, and then we press our corner. So it's got the attack philosophy. We get bubble releases by, our, uh, uh, by the receivers, okay? Again, what I mean by that is, you know, normally offenses are lined up and you play off and they just run whatever damn route they want, right? But when you press them, the receivers have to run a round press. Does that make sense? So they get bubble releases. Based on that, we kind of know what's going on uh, from there. So that's, again, just another reason that we like, and I'll explain more of that gives you know, the route tendencies away. We know outside release, inside release, and I'll get deeper into that in a second. Forces routes to take more time. So talking about the bubble releases, it takes more time, okay? The timing is huge. There's times where we may be beat by a receiver by two yards because we pressed, but we won at the line of scrimmage, but he's beat us. But it screwed up the timing where the quarterback can't throw it. We played Memphis one uh, year when I was at Cincinnati, and I forget what was the little tailback they had that was unbelievable. Anybody remember that Memphis tailback plays in the NFL? D'Angelo Williams, exactly. D'Angelo Williams, number 20, I believe he was at Memphis. I don't know what he was in the NFL. I think he's still playing. But, you know, we shut down the run game, and they're throwing these fades. And this quarterback, he got no, – it's like they, pra they must have not practiced versus press all week or they were throwing routes on air because it was the worst. I mean, I don't know why I would remember back to 2004 or 5 when D'Angelo Williams was there, but it was like the worst performance ever. I was like, what is – they must have not practiced. They must have not known what, that we pressed that week or something, but we pressed every down. It wasn't a surprise, but it's just the routes that, I mean, he'd be running down the numbers and the ball's thrown way out of bounds. I mean, it was thrown five yards inside the hash. It was like they just couldn't, it couldn't work the timing. So it was huge. And it's, it's been that way all the time. Takes away underneath throws, low, low percentage throws. I'm going to talk about that in a second. Uh, it keeps the receivers off our safeties, okay? And a lot of people think pressing so he can't run. But when I press, if I press coach here, if he wants to go block that door, and that door right there is a safety, when he goes to block him, my safety comes down, because I'm pressed, I'm on the line of scrimmage. He goes to crack, I'm on the line of scrimmage. Now you added me in. If I was ever playing me, I would just run off the corners. Because anytime you go to crack, you, you know, instead of nine guys, now you got ten. Both corners, okay, both number one receivers go to crack the safeties. Now you got 11 guys. You just brought 11 guys in there. We played Wisconsin one time, you know, when uh, Britt Bielema was there. And uh, matter of fact, D'Antonio was in the hospital, had a heart attack the week before, and we had everybody up there. We, you know, our safeties, as soon as that guy blocked, they came down, they cracked. Our safeties were getting TFLs in the backfield. D'Antonio, you know, he always liked to back the safeties up. He was, you know, he's a DB guy. He'd like to back them up further. I'm like, Coach, we got to get them closer. You want to get them further away. Um, but, you know, he probably was going to have another heart attack in the hospital after that game. Um, Forces throws the secondary receivers. It gets in the receiver's mind. The receivers hate it when we press. Okay, our, this spring, our receivers will hate that we're in their face every single day, okay? Maybe the best two at the end here, the best two reasons to like press coverage, it's easier to coach than off technique, okay? I'm all for easier. I talked about keeping it simple. That's the best reason. It's easier, and I'm going to explain to you why it's easier in a minute. And then you'll kind of go, oh, makes sense, okay? And then the last one, again, is, again, maybe the most important uh, one is the players love it, 
okay? And the more high school tape I watch, I see press all the time. Back 10 years ago when we were doing this and 12 years ago, I guess 15 years ago, um, when I got, you know, whatever year it was, you know, there wasn't, you watch high school tape and you had to guess whether these guys can play press technique or not, okay? Can they do it? Are they fast enough? Whatever. And, you know, we played with the shittiest corners, okay? And, and I've always told Harden Barnett, our secondary coach at Michigan State, you know, that little, that little walk-on kid that's got no scholarship, I said, your best day coaching is coaching that guy. And, I, you know, we had a Parker kid that, you know, that, you know, by God, you were never going to put him in the game, but he was a damn good practice player because you could put him out there, and he believed in the technique, and he did it, and he covered some of the best receivers we ever had at Michigan State. Same thing at Pitt. Some of these guys can cover these guys because they play with good technique. Okay, if they ever put them and played them off, it would look, it'd be embarrassing. And I don't want to get into, I got all kinds of stories about playing off coverage. But the players love it. And, you know, I don't know if you guys ever see this, but you go to camp, you know, I used to go to Ohio State's camp when Jim Trestle was there and we'd watch camp and, and they'd have 1,500 kids there and a DB coach would come out and they'd start teaching all the off technique and they played a lot of cover three. And then, you know, there was, didn't, the, the coaches, Ohio State coaches didn't say one word about pressing. It's all playing off and backpedaling and all these drills for, you know, 45 minutes, and then they come to one-on-ones, what's everybody do? They're like this. I mean, you didn't even coach that. They go to one-on-ones, what's the kid want to do? They want to press all the time. So to me, that's what they want to do. Then let's let them do it, and let's get real good at it, and that's why we do it, okay? Um, talking a little bit of cover four, again, getting into the details. First thing is, and, you know, probably just like I just want, you know, it starts with really being able to, I always tell our linebackers and our DBs, you got to be able to talk, count to, you know, count to three, okay, really three. You know, one, two, three, from either side of the football. One, two, three, that's all. Our Mike linebacker, he's got to be the smartest guy. He's got to find the number three guy. But our corners are pretty match, uh, matched up on one. Our safeties are matched up on two. Okay, so corner, safety, safety, corner, and then, you know, then our backers will be matched up on that guy as well. And I'll explain those in a second, okay? When motion happens, okay, now that gets real confusing. He's number one, number two. That was number three. When he goes in motion, that's the new number three, okay? Makes sense, that was one, now that becomes number one. So, you know, motion, shift, all that stuff, our guys, we ought to be able to still go back to one, two, three, okay? So it's simple as that. Okay, now, question, okay? Again, what routes can that receiver run against that corner right now? Someone said that. What's that? Everything. Everything. Okay, has everybody got that? Okay, so the reason I like press coverage is there's the corner, he can run the slant, the end, the whatever. He's got all those different routes he can run, okay? He can run everything, okay? And I, as I tell you that story, I'm going to tell you a quick story. 2002, I'm the linebacker coach at Northern Illinois. I won't take credit for being the D coordinator. We played Ben Roethlisberger at Miami of Ohio. I'm at Northern Illinois. He threw for the most yards. You go ahead and Google it tonight when you're drinking a beer. He threw for more yards in 2002 against Northern Illinois, 500 and some yards. Our coordinator's like, we've got to run a bunch of different coverages because this kid will kill us. He's a good quarterback. Okay, we ran all these sh coverages, and we ran them all shitty. We didn't keep it simple. We ran all these coverages, and he kicked our ass. Now, I was coordinating the run game. They rushed for 32 yards. Okay, they threw for 500 and something, 541 maybe. Ben had the ball for over 45 minutes. Our offense had it for 40, 15 minutes, okay? Their defense was playing like that against us. Our offense only had the ball for 15 minutes, and we beat their ass. So we still won the game. Okay, I don't think I've ever lost a game where someone threw for 500 yards and rushed for, I think we beat Baylor in the Cotton Bowl a few years ago. Baylor rushed for 18 yards, threw for about 500 yards. We won, okay? Stopped the run first. But corner playing off, my Evil House corners were playing off all day, right? Got killed. Ran, you know, who, who, I mean, you could drop a bunch more, uh, you know, arrows on that paper. So I'm going to take the job at Miami Ohio. Our, our offense coordinator, Northern Illinois, says, you, Coach, don't take that job. You're going to get fired. Their corners are terrible. I told you, they were 120th in the country. I got hired seven days before spring ball. I'm watching Alfonso Hunter and Daryl, uh, Daryl, Daryl, Alfonso Hodge and Daryl Hunter are the two corners. I get there, the middle linebacker, Terrell Jones, says, Coach, our corners are terrible. They're like, terrible. Because I, I asked him, I said, hey, what do we got to do to be safe? He goes, coach, they're terrible. They played off coverage. In the corner, go to the post, and they'd go that way. I watched them. I was like, they're pretty good. I think they got talent. They're just put in a bad position. We pressed these guys up. They were all Americans. They both were free agents in the NFL. It was like the biggest miracle we ever made in Oxford, Ohio in 2003. But all it was is that, okay? Now, we go to the next page here, okay? Now, what, 
what route can that guy run? The ball's inside, it's inside leverage, inside out. What, what route can that guy run? Okay, slant, okay. Let's, uh, let's go against press coverage, outside release. Okay, so he's gonna go outside away. What, what, what route can he run? Fade. Fade, okay, there it is. What other route can he run? An out, nobody runs him. He can run a comeback. That's about the only route we're gonna see. Okay, he outside releases, that's the only two routes that our secondary coach, corner coach has to worry about. That's it. Now every once in a while, I don't know why, we had a receiver coach one year that used to run outside release posts. It's like, what the hell is that? You can't do that. And it was shitty because the corner's sitting right underneath it as he ran up the field. Didn't make any sense, but they never ever threw it, never completed it, but he ran it. I still don't understand it, but, um, but that's the only route you got there, guys. That's it, okay? If we go to an inside release, what routes can you run inside release? Someone said earlier, slant, right? You can run a slant. Now again, we are inside leverage. We should have a safety coming down somewhere. We should have a backer. We have a little bit of help in there. We don't have much help on the fade. Okay, you can run a curl or a dig, okay? And you can run a post. This past year, we were seeing more inside release, post, corner, okay? We saw more of those, and I'll show you that in a second here. So, but that's basically the routes. I think we saw five of those post corners where the inside released and broke that way, which we got to work on. Um, but those are the routes. I mean, those are five routes, better than that, that whole damn route tree we saw earlier, okay? So that's one of the reasons we know. Now, last year I told you, you know, every year we've done this, I'm just going to clip through them real quick. We saw 103 fades, okay? At least, versus, this is all versus press coverage. Again, I'm not going to bore you with all this, but I want you to understand the routes that we see. And this is 2018 and ACC compared to Big Ten. I've got them all, except for the one year that I took the job at Pitt. I didn't have a chance to do anything uh, except try to hire staff. But last year, we, they threw 17 fades. Of the 103 that ran up, this is all press coverage, 103 fades they ran, they threw 17 times, completed four, okay? And I know 17 divided by four is not a 50-50 ball, okay? So, you know, offenses talk, you know, I know how many offensive coordinators we got in here calling those plays. I was talking about 50-50 ball. 50-50, my ass. It ain't no 50-50. Okay, so outside release fade. Inside release, favorite route. Okay, saw 29 down. They completed 50% of them. There's a 50-50 route. Don't let them run the inside slant. That's 50-50 in my, my calculation. Post, completed four out of 17, the same as they did in the fade. I hate inside release. That's the easiest throw. I'm pissed off at our secondary coach right now that we, we even saw those because he's jumping out trying to cover the fade and getting beat inside as I watch uh, cut-ups this, this offseason. Post corner, okay, that's an inside release. That's the new one I said. They threw two of them, completed both of them. Again, I know that's what happened. We're going to figure that one out. It's not that hard, but when you're giving them the post, then the post corner gets open. So those two right there, we will be working hard in the offseason. They threw three hitches. They can have the hitch all day, kind of like they can the slant. They're going to get hit. Curls. So, again, you can see the routes that we have to work on, guys. Inside release, outside releases right there. That's basically right there. And there's your dig. Dig and curls are about the same. After that, that's a snag where he goes in and out. It's not a non-route, okay? Crack and go. Really pissed off. We never give up crack and goes. We give up two of them. We lost the game to Stanford because we give up a crack and go. Corner's got it. He's on him, and he looks in the back there, and the guy takes off. It's like, what are you doing? Talk about keep, we keep it simple enough that that's easy ass play, okay? Um, 2017, same thing, okay? 22 uh, attempted fades, fade, curl, slant, hitch, an over route, which is you know like a naked, a post, completed one out of three, ran 10 of them, there's a post corner. Look at that, zero, okay? Ran four of them, didn't complete any of them, then this year they complete some, pisses me off, you know? It's like, how, you know, are we getting better or are we getting worse? It ain't that hard, okay? Again, you can go back through 2016, fade, Comeback is way up there, okay? You would think you'd see more comebacks, okay? But again, 16 out of 44 completed. So I'm not gonna bore you, but through the years, same thing, fade at the top, comeback hitch. Again, you go back, to, you know, Big Ten champion, right, this, this year. Again, fade, curl, post, hitch, slant, comeback. Those are the routes you gotta, I mean, you know, cross country route, jailbreak, that, you know, a glance is a skinny post, they completed, threw one, completed one. I mean, those routes not really worried about 2012. I'm not going to bore you, but you can see fade, curl, post, slant, comeback, okay? 2010, fade, curl. These are the details that we're going through year by year, trying to keep it simple. You know, back in 2008, our first year, no, second year at Michigan State, you know, again, different deal, okay? You know, this is through the years, okay? And here's why I said 50-50 balls or not. 2018, they completed 24% when they threw those, which is way too high, okay? And I'll go back to this year. 
after these two years, Ronaldo Hill was our secondary coach. Matter of fact, he's the DB coach with the Denver Broncos now. Uh, he played in the league for a long time. Um, but after 26% completion my first year at, uh, you can see there's no 2014, that's the year I took the job. But 26 and 36% completion, I'm like, Ronaldo, this is bullshit. So I challenged him. That's when I started, I wrote up this whole chart up on our board, our grease board. I got a picture on my phone. I put it up on the grease board. I said, Ronaldo, 36 and 26, that's bullshit. Okay, now Tabriski was the coach or the, the quarterback, and, you know, he was pretty good, and so was Deshaun Watson was pretty good in the ACC. But that was way too high. So I challenged that. I said, look at where we used to be. 2008, 14%. I mean, completed two, completed two, complete. How about 2011? We were pretty good at quarter. They completed zero fades. And once you make a player get a pick, they stop throwing them. You, you let them complete a couple, they're, they're slinging them all over the place, going, hey, that's easy. Let's throw another one. Okay? But, again, I challenged him. said the worst we'd ever been is 2012, completed 20%. And here we are. And then 4% 2013. I don't know. I'm sure we were pretty good in 2014. But all of a sudden, 26, 36. Then we went to 14. Now we're back to 24. Ronaldo went to the NFL. Now I got a new corners coach. Again, just trying to work on the simple details there. So those are just some uh, details there. So corner play. I'm going to put these all up there real quick here um, and just talk about it. So we're going to press, and you're going to see different techniques, but we're going to press. If the ball's in here, we're going to press the corner inside, inside eye, okay? I don't want to be in here. The ball's out here. I want that guy running the fade, okay? And I fight with our secondary coaches and our DB coaches, our corners coaches, because our guys want to be in a cool stance, okay? So I like a shadow stance. These guys want to be square. And ultimately, I don't give a shit what stance you're in. Just cover the guys, okay? So I'm not so picky that I say you have to, you know, I'd be a real ass if I'd say, hey, you know, and, you know, if we complete, if they get more than 36% this year, then I may go crazy, okay? But inside eye, I like my inside foot up with my outside foot back, okay? And there's a reason that, you know, and our DB coaches get sick of hearing. I'm like, well, if you'd had his inside foot back, it might have been okay if he was shadowing. But to me, it's the illusion that you're pressed. So I'm pressed up. I want to get as close to his, him. You know, I want him to uh, smell my breath. Not tonight, okay? <laughs> and I'm going to start to give a little ground, okay? I'm going to start to give a little ground on the snap. So it's the illusion we're pressed. I don't want to be up in there square like this, throwing two hands in or getting beat real quick and him completing the fade. I want to make it hard on him. I'm not going to give him the fade, okay? We want to make him hard and work at the line of scrimmage, okay? But if I press you, what's the first thing you're going to do? You got any idea? What are you going to do? Oh, you're going to hit me? That's slowing you down. You ain't running no damn route if you hit me. You're going to block me. Hey, give, me a, give me a receiver. You're an old line coach. You're like, <laughs> the hell would I know? Run around. You're going to run around? No, I'll come over to you. What are you going to run around me? Okay, around. so you're going to speed release. You're going to run way over there. Avoid all contact. Mm -hmm. Is that what you guys do in Oregon? That's what the receivers do. Okay, you're going to shake and bake a little bit? Jelly? You're going to be a little jelly. Okay, yeah. a, little, a little jelly. I like that. You get jelly, jelly. jelly and organ. Okay, so as you're jellying and juking around, okay, I'm going like this, and I'm keeping my leverage on you. Okay, so that's what they're going to They're going to shake, but we do get some speed releases. Okay, matter of fact, if we get a speed release, okay, just in case you are pressing, if you get a speed release, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to jam your ass now. Now I'm going to give you a, what, we, you know, I'm going to give you a quick jam because you can't, as soon as you start to see, if you see a speed release in, my 11 years with D'Antonio, I talked about that one receiver coach was, you know, that ran the outside release post. Never saw that before. We had, we had one day this receiver coach came out. And that's why I said I mentioned that. He came out and they started speed releasing for the first time ever. And we were getting our ass beat. And I was like, what the shit's going on? So me and Harlan went back in the meeting room and I'm like looking at them going, they're speed releasing all day. They just came out and started speed releasing. I said, we're going to kill them tomorrow. They think they figured it out. We're going to jam them tomorrow all day. Because as, as, I mean, as soon as you just want to take off running, if all they do is throw a jam, and all of a sudden now you're dead, right? You can't just speed release all day. If I throw my hands in until you got a problem. So, you know, so we quick jammed the next day, and it was over. We once had a guy named Sidlowski. Um, he put his receivers in a three-point stance. He's like, I can't get off press. So he put them. This is at Northern Illinois. Honest to God, college wide receiver coach. He put his receivers in a three-point stance. And our corners went up there, and as soon as the ball was snapped, they grabbed the top of his jersey and threw him right in the ground. <laughs> It's like, that, that's not going to work either. But, um, but so we're going to shadow. We're going to be inside leverage. We're going to try to keep it, and we're going to get an offhand jam. Yep? Do you see an increase in motion in inverted split? We will see. A, that's a great question. We'll see a little bit of motion. And, again, if, come on up here. If you go in motion, okay, 
If you go in motion, we're going to do what we call pin the hip. So I'm lined up here. You start to go in motion there. Okay, I'm going to pin your hip, okay, to a point where you're there and you turn up the field, and boom, I'm right here right now. Okay, so we call it pin the hip. Great question. And then he said play it off, okay. If the receiver's, you know, here I'd like to press that guy because he's an X, he's on line of scrimmage. And again, we practice both. If he's the Z and he's off, which we see half of that, right, because one X, one Z. Um, if he's off, now we want to kind of mash grapes. We're not giving a lot of ground. We already got the ground there, okay? So there's already, we're already pressed on line of scrimmage. Matter of fact, we're checking with the official if we're good, and we're trying to just kind of what we call mash grapes, which I guess you guys got some pretty good uh, uh, wine, wine places around here, too, I heard. If they start stacking it, yeah. we're going to press them, too. That's why they're stacking it, so we'll stop pressing. Great, another great question. Uh, if they stack... We have different techniques we're going to play, but we're, we're not going to let them take. Sometimes we will. We're going to, we, we've got different tools that we're going to do for everything, but if someone's stacking us, we'd like to press them and take them out of that, okay? Because if you press the front guy and he starts stunning around, what's the second guy going to do? Run, you know, run right up the back of him. So we will press them. We've got different techniques we call Halo. We've got Bronco. Um, but, you know, just to give you an example, um, the, the first one I say is Bronco. We're going to press the guy. I mean, if they're stacked right behind each other, we're stacking, the, obviously, the guy, and we're going to take that guy. If we call Halo, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to take the second guy, okay? We'll, we'll take the outside release. We, I mean, so we got different ways of doing whatever we want, but we're going to either take the guy on, take number one, take number two, or, hey, I'll take the outside release. Safety, you take the inside release. But we're going to still press you so you don't get what you want. And that's the main thing we want to do. See, anytime we play off coverage, you know, someone runs right through it. You saw a Clemson game. Clemson, uh, Alabama, they lined up in a stack and ran right through Alabama's coverage because they, you know, probably tried to play some type of area quarters and it ran right through the middle, which was not a, it was a touchdown. Not good. Yep. We have a, a, a way of calling for bail if we want to bail and we try to make it look like our zone pressures because we bail in thirds. We'll press and bail and play you know, some of our zone pressures, but we're pressing and we're pressing. You know, we're going to shadow off a little bit, but it's press, you know, majority of the time. We very rarely do bail, maybe two, got two times a game just to mix it in so it looks like maybe they think it's thirds and all of a sudden it's quarters. But then that's just playing quarters off. Anytime we bail, you know what we see? They're going to throw the comeback, you know. And it's just like, you know, we're just giving them a comeback. And I hate, I hate, I hate, I like to be stingy. I don't want to give them anything. So you know, the pressing gives them uh, nothing there. That's goes great questions. Anybody else? We good? All right. Safety play. They line nine by two. You know, we call it stick Q21. They got number two. Two doesn't go vertical. They'll look to one. You know, we're going to cross key our safeties to number three. So anytime it's trips over there, our safety will cross key. Uh, our safeties, one of the big things in the run game is they have to beat the crack. They've got to beat the crack. If the receiver tightens down to get the safety, okay, let's just say, Coach here is the tight end. I'm on a tight end. I'll say he comes in a tight alignment to get the crack. If he's way out there, I'm good at nine yards deep. But the closer that receiver comes to me, then I tighten down. And that's, that's what Wisconsin tried to do. They tried to go to a tight Z split. Let's just say tight end Z. And they said, hey, we're going to move the receiver down to get the crack. So we said, okay, you're going to do that. Then we're moving closer. <laughs> that guy blocked. This guy's here. He goes to crack because now his angle changed. Now the corner knows it that he's cracking and then the corner crack replaces, if that makes sense to you. I'm talking really fast, sorry. Yep, five minutes? We got a lot, we got a lot. I don't know, Coach, <laughs> Coach Clay's got no chance. <laughs> okay, um, again, the last thing is our quarterbacks, you know, back in the old days, quarter coverage used to be, you know, I, I told you, the, the safety's, you know, key the quarterback to number two, which is who they got to cover, and then move to number one, that's our basic rule. But we tell our safeties, once two disappears, he blocks, he goes in or out, that we're gonna we're gonna look at the quarterback and see where he's throwing the ball. There's no sense in robbing number one out there when the quarterback's looking over there. Okay, so that's just a quick tip there. And we we really can't be done in five minutes. Linebacker play alignments. Okay. Linebackers, again, three match. Our mic is a three match. Okay, our mic linebacker's three match. We always tell them two things can happen. Three goes out, okay, or three will go vertical. We already talked about three goes vertical. That's what we call the uh, the fifth problem. Okay, three go vertical, you got them, okay? North Carolina hit us on a T shoot. I went to, we, we, we worked it all, all week. Because Quint Regina started shooting the quarterback. You know, he ran over there in the quarterback. I was like, what are you doing? T shoot right up our you know, tails. Wasn't very good. But 
If he goes out, our Mike linebacker's yelling out, 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 looking for the new number three coming in. So it's a match zone underneath principle. Our three match, or excuse me, our two match is our outside linebackers, our Sam, our Will, whatever you want to call them. The, the number two receiver can do three things. He can go out. If he goes out, that backer's got him. If he goes out and up, that backer's got him. If he goes vertical, our job as an outside backer is to reroute that guy and take some speed off him for the safety. If he goes in, we're going to yell in, 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 and sell, send it to the mic, and most likely something's coming back to us. If we say in, 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 he's looking for something to shallow. Nothing shallow, look for something deep. As simple as that, okay? I think that's the end. Now we're going to watch a little video because you said we got five minutes, right? <laughs> okay, now, what formation do you guys want to start with? You guys, do, you guys want to see three by ones? Okay. Let me, uh, I'm just going to throw you, this is where it starts here. I'm just going to show you one run. I don't know if anybody wants to cut the lights. Again, I've got, I've got all kinds of tape here. Again, for the last couple of years here, you know, obviously tape from this year. But this is, you know, a little bit of press out there, whatever it is. Guy's looking like he's fake bailing. Matter of fact, we had a pressure called, and then the kids called it off. So he was going to bail thirds like, like you asked over there. Now he's pressing, okay? But talked about just the D-line attacking up front. Okay, they're not going to be perfect. Okay, D-line, who's the D Give me a D-line coach. Raise your hand. Do the, do the linebacker coaches bitch at you when you get reached and shit? Do they bitch at you? That's like that. The, another reason I like quarters coverage, okay, because the D-line coaches want to yell, or the linebacker coaches want to yell, you got reached, coach. Bullshit. You're going to get reached. You're lined up this far. The reason we line up our linebackers five yards is to fix the D-line so you guys can play fast. That makes sense? I mean, you're going to get reached. You know, I had a, D, a linebacker coach one time. He's like, he'd run right up the DN, my DN's ass. I coach the D-line. I've coached linebackers, coach safety. He'd line, run up the DN's ass. Tight end reaches me. I'm stuck in the C-gap, and he'd run right up. My, I'm like, are you blind? <laughs> I mean, my God. I mean, you know, you come out there with a damn cane. No, no offense, okay? But so when, when that happened, D-line coaches, when that happened, you know what I ended up doing? I said, okay, well, shit, I'll never get reached again, coach. So I lined him up like this wide. Now when that guy comes to zone me, that C gap's gigantic, right? But I'm not going to get reached anymore. You're going to get reached, okay? It's going to happen. So, you know, as you watch this end zone, I'm just going to click it to the end zone. You're going to see that's a big son of a bitch. He's going to get reached. They know where they're going. They know where they're going, and we don't, okay? We don't know where they're going. You're going to take, we like to have perfect footwork, but going to get reached, okay? I mean, it's going to happen. This guy's going to fall, going to fall down and trip up everybody else. But we want our linebackers downhill, and someone will make a play, and that's why you want your safety. So, again, that's his number two, okay? Matter of fact, that's number one. You know, this is a tight formation, so really that's his number two in the backfield. So we got everybody down in there. We'll, someone will freaking fix you. Our linebackers are supposed to fix our D-linemen, okay? So you guys said you wanted some three-by-one, so I'm going to exit out of here and slide down it because he said five minutes, right? See, I still got five minutes. Still got five minutes. I like Oregon. This is great. We slide down here. It's three by one, detached. So I got some flex. I got two by one. Okay, here's some three by one with a tight end. Matter of fact, yeah, we'll just we'll start here. I'll give you a three by one with a bunch. So again, I don't want to get into a you know into a quarter show here, but you know anytime they bunch up, there's a three by one. I've just got two snaps of this, but we're gonna play some type of cover two over here. We're not gonna play pure quarters. Okay, when we call quarters, we have all kinds of calls we can make. We can call box, quarters, halo, whatever. Here we're going to call cloud and play cover two over there because there's no reason to play quarters. We don't, you know, you, you don't want to play quarters when one and two are close together. We, we good there? Anytime one and two are close together, what are they going to do? They're going to do that. We don't want to play quarters and then the corner get picked and pressed. So anytime they're close together, you know, we're going to try to play, you know, not play quarters. Um, you know, unless, again, I, I, you know, the halo we're talking about, that if they're stacked, I mean, there's times when we want to based on the routes, okay? But based on the routes, I mean, we're going to play some type of quarters, coverage here. There's your slant, which you're going to get thrown in there. But that's just an example of, you know, backside safety here is working over to number three. So, you know, they, he knows where his number, he can at least count to three. So one, okay, and then we'll box him up over there. Let me show you another one here. Again, it looks like the same thing. Again, now there's one of those motions we talked about. That's one, that's two, that's three. All of a sudden, now that's one, that's two. Here comes three, okay? And again, now you can see them making calls right now. See them with their hands. And we're making them signaling calls to get what we want, okay? Here's why I said we like it versus screens. There's a crack screen, 
where the corner is able to you know, slip up there. He should have had an interception. He still gives the guy a catch. That pisses me off. Kid plays for the Philadelphia Eagles. You know, he's trying to get the damn interception. I'm like, what are you doing? Just make the tackle. But he, he, he started for the Philadelphia Eagles as a rookie. Really smart, knows what he's doing, learned football. So here's some real three-by-ones. Um, again, it's Clemson in the, in the ACC championship game. Again, motion into three-by-one. So again, our guys got a motion to it. Again, our base alignments we won't talk about, but pressed up, pressed up, both safeties. Again, these guys are two, you know, really close together. So these safeties will be calling, we'll be making a Zorro call. We're talking about everything. I mean, the great thing about when you're simple, what you're doing defensively, you're able to talk about what they're doing on offense. But just watching those two guys, you know, uh, switch up there, these guys are talking. Like, he, if these guys were to go, if he's going vertical, he'd take that guy, he'd take that guy, if they were to continue to go vertical. But this is how, you know, he goes under. See, as soon as this, his number two goes underneath, this guy goes, hey, I'll take that. But he knows he's got the O safety. Then he sees him coming back out, so he's got all the help he needs. We got a safety that he only has that guy vertical. The backer's got him if he goes out, right? I mean, two goes in, then he goes out. We still, you know, we got two guys hitting the guy. Again, just watching the technique up top. Again, I told you, you know, they're trying to inch out, trying to stay square. I don't mind his technique. That's Dane Jackson there. He'll play in the NFL. Not bad. I don't like him on his heels. Not bad there. Again, pretty good here. You saw what these guys did to the Alabama, you know, corners here. That's damn good coverage. They had 108 yards passing this evening. That's all they had uh, in the ACC championship because they could run the ball down our throat, and that's a problem. <laughs> First play was 75 yards, bad linebacker fits. It wasn't because they just killed us. 75 yards, boom. And they had a three-yard touchdown and a 10-yard touchdown on a turnover. Yeah, they're, they're, they're manned up there. When he goes vertical, they're man-turning. Okay, on a post or inside release, outside release, they're man-turning. Is that, I can't see you, Coach, but is that what you're asking? Yeah. yeah, they can't zone turn on a fade. They'd be in some deep shit. Okay, so another three-by-one again, just, you know, four verticals here. Miami, again, you can see, you know, I don't like him popping. I like him to... The reason I like the shadow, see how he's trying to stick with the guy, and he goes, see how the corner's weaving with him? And again, some guys can play. It's still pretty good coverage. He's still where he needs to be. But when the, here's what I like. That's the receiver. That's what, you listening? What's your name? Nate. Yeah, what is it, Nate? Nate. Nate. See how that receiver, he's just blocking him. See how he's moving around? Oh, yeah. That's shake and bake. That's my new jelly term. He's jellying him up a little bit right there. See the jelly technique? But he's jellying and we're jellying. I don't like the jelly, too. I want him to jelly and me to be nice and smooth, waiting for you to finish your jelly, okay? So I can eat your ass up. And you know, pretty good, pretty, pretty good coverage there. Again, he's you can see he's but he's backpedaling, okay? Now he's getting it done. Look, that's more of what you want, but I don't want backpedal because if you get stuck, I, I like shadow, if you get stuck with your outside foot up, and again, on the fade, if I press him again and I shadow back and he runs a fade, my hips are opened up to the fade. Because that's what we see through all those years. It was fade, 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 fade. Every one of them was a fade is the number one route we see. But if I ever lined up like this and shattered off with my hips opened inside to the post, I'm going to get opened up to the fade, which is what the number one route I see. So when you're kind of inching back, okay, like the guy is up top, you can end up being in a bad position. Now he gets it right, and it's pretty good coverage there. You can see, again, just a great quarters. He's got that guy vertical. He's working over to that guy vertical. And covered, covered, covered. We got a guy on him. Now, we got to make a play now still. Sometimes you don't, you know, that goes down to the 50-50. And again, as we said, if this guy goes vertical right here, he's got him. Okay, and that should be our fifth. Okay, or five guys vertical, five guys eligible. Okay. Yep. Five minutes? You sure? Is Coach Clay's here yet? Coach Clay's you back there? Oh, you are? Keep going? Okay, he said keep going. One more play. We'll do one more pass. This is a run. <laughs> this is, we, can't, we can't stop on a run. These guys didn't come here to stop the run. Okay, just inside zone. Okay, again, just watching guys will get reached up front. Tracy knows. Tracy plays with some wide-ass knives now. Coach Clay's now, hell of a coach, great coach. But he winds up, I love his wide nines. We battled for a long time, Minnesota versus the Spartans for a long time. I don't like how he ends up too high, but you know, pretty good 
you know, pretty good coverage. Linebacker doesn't really get blocked right here. He, he bot blocks himself, runs right, like I told you, he runs right down the back end of his D tackle. Like, you know, find the hole. He ends up finding it late. Let's see a pass here. Here's, here's Clemson, you know, throwing a bubble here. You'd like it for, you know, I guess, no, it's another run. We don't want to see a run. Here's a little, here's how we would react to a naked, I guess. A little bit of a naked. But our guys are where they need to be. Let's not watch that one. I don't like that one. Here's another run. He said one more pass. I'm not, oh, here's another. We don't want to see it throughout. You want to see another four verticals? Here's just another example, another four verticals, which, again, you don't want to be in cover three when they're running four verticals. But here's a nice reroute. Guy's trying to go vertical. Boom, boom. Got that one covered. Great thing is if, if you do it right, these easy throws inside, doubled, doubled. The poor boys out here are one-on-one, -on -one, okay? And, you know, again, wiring them up. Again, pretty good offhand jam there. You know, he's stiff on them down the field. Pretty good. Pretty good over here. Again, just, you know, the guy lines up. I love seeing him line up, you know, wherever on the divider. He's lined up four yards, three yards on top of the numbers, and he runs that route, and all, and all of a sudden now he's down at the bottom of the numbers. Just, you know, the quarterback better be really good to put it in there. So I guess my time is up. I can't wait to hear Coach Clay's talk. Thanks, guys. Appreciate your time.